Good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome to the Peace in the Morning Show. My name is Delegate Daryl Barnes. I'm sitting in for our good brother, Darius A. Stanton, who is out today. But we have in the studio this morning no other than Belinda Queen. All right, all right. Good morning, good morning. You know, uh, everybody knows you, but everybody doesn't know you. So can you tell uh, our listening audience and everyone that's watching us on Facebook Live, who is Belinda Queen? All right, I'll be glad to. Good morning to the eLife Media listeners and Peace in the Morning Show listener. I am the one and only Belinda Queen. I am a strong community activist. I am a mother, um, a stepmother, a godmother, a foster mother of many children. Um, I am a strong community activist who is working hard to make a difference in the community. I believe in engaging, educating, and empowering the citizens of Prince George's County and knowing what's going on in the county. I am the voice for the working people. I'm the voice for the parents who cannot be there to support their kids. I am the voice for the disabled who's unable to go out there and fight. I am a fighter and I fight for we the people of Prince George's County. That's Wow, 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 wow. Sound like you're a very busy young lady. Yes, I am. But I love what I do. You know, there's so much going on in Prince George's County right now. And I know you are very active as, active as far as letting people know what's going on, when it's going on, who's doing it, why they're doing it. Uh, and I believe that's what uh, people come to love most about you. But now I think uh, you're, you're ready to take your, your sights uh, to another level, uh, that your eyes are on the prize, that you want to put kids first. So um, from my understanding, you are now a candidate for school board in District 6. Why are you running? Yes, I am. I am a candidate for school board District 6, and my motto and low slogan is put kids first for a change. Um, I had to really think really long and hard about what I wanted to run for. I wanted to make sure I can do something that I would be serving the people. And, and, and I, you know, I have a calling on my life, and my calling is to be of service to the people. Um, and I just wanted to make sure it was something needed. So much is going on right here in Prince George's County. And I, see, I saw that the, it was needed. The call was needed for someone who had the heart, who was concerned, and who cared about the people. So I decided to go ahead and jump on in there and run. Um, we have a lot of people that are on the school board, and, I, and everyone is doing a great job, but some people are not speaking for the people. Mm -hmm. And I know that I can make a difference with putting kids first for a change. Um, you hear a lot that's going on, and you hear a lot that's being spent with money and how money has been allocated and spent, but I don't hear a lot about us investing and doing things that are going to to me, that, that are going to be surrounded around our kids reaching their hopes and their mm -hmm. dreams for the future. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to run, to put kids first for a change, because I want every kid to reach their dreams and their hopes, whether they decide to go to college, whether they want to go into the military, whether they want to go in trade school, or whether they just want to get out here and work. I want to make sure in Prince George's County that we take every child that attend our public schools and they are able to reach their dreams and their hopes. Y'all heard it first, right here on the Peace in the Morning Show. If you like to ask Belinda Queen Howard, I'm sorry, she dropped the Howard. Uh, it's just a habit. That's okay. But if you all like to hear from Belinda Queen, give us a call right now in the studio at 240-455-5934. I don't know if you heard me or not, but give us a call at 240-455-5934. Because she would love to hear from you. My next question to you is, if elected, can you tell us what are some of your priorities? Well, when elected, my priority would be to put kids first for a change. 
one of the first priority for me is my degrees in accounting is to check out the school budget. Mm. We need to massage that budget and to make sure that money is being spent that I don't see personally being spent on the schools, investing in these schools. Um, I've been PTSA for over 30 years um, with so many kids graduating from schools, and the schools are not changing. They're looking the same, especially in central Prince George's County. It's no way a school should be looking the same way it was looking when my ex-husband graduated or when my sister and brother graduated years ago and they're in their 40s and 50s. Mm. We need a change. So that's one of the first things that we need to bring our schools up to the 21st century so our kids can get them 21st century jobs. Mm. I, I love it. I don't know if you guys heard that, but she said we need to put kids first. And that's her number one priority is making sure that our kids are put first. So I want you to give us a call at 240-455-5934. And if you guys don't give us a call, then I'm going to continue to play some music. Give me some music, Roland. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have no other than Belinda Queen in the studio, candidate for District 6 School Board. Belinda, you indicated before we took a little break that uh, your degree or your background is in accounting. Yes. So I guess my next question is, uh, are there any areas uh, that you would consider cutting uh, in a school board budget? Um, yes, it's a lot of areas I would consider um, cutting in the school board budget. Um, I actually would ra really need to look at some of the budget. I, you know, you, you only know about what you hear. I haven't actually seen the actual budget, but I hear that a lot of high up money is being spent on extra principals at schools. Um, a lot of money is being spent on people that's in the administrative department. Hmm. I, I need that money to be invested in our kids. I need it to be spent at the schools, and I need to make sure it's being spent on technology. I need to make sure it's being spent on books and materials. Hmm. I have a problem where we get so much money sent from the delegates um, and from the county, you know, for schools, but yet we still have teachers that ask you know, parents and us to donate pencils and papers, and we still got to send in so much supplies to help for the classroom because they need these things. Why are we paying all these tax dollars and they're not being carefully spent? 
somewhere along that budget needs to be massaged and we need to make sure that we're spending taxpayer dollars wisely. If it was my money or your money, the way we spend it would be a little different. But when we're spending people who work hard for their money, we need to make sure that every penny is being spent wisely and invested in our children. Did you hear that Facebook? She said that every dollar needs to be spent wisely and we need to look at more in technology, putting books into our school system. I think this is good stuff. I need you guys to give us a call right here in the studio, 240-455-5934, because if you don't call, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to play some more music. <laughs> Come on, call us, y'all. I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. I want to know what you what change you're looking for. As I stated, I want to be your voice. I want to represent you. The only way I can be your voice and represent you, if you let me know what changes you want to see in Prince George's County Public School. What do you? What are the problems that you're having? What do you feel like that need to be different? That's why I'm here. I am here to represent you. Give us a call. You know, Uniquely Mad says she totally agrees with you. So, you know, we want to hear from more people. and We want you guys to either text us on Facebook Live, give us a call. But my question is, what, what changes should be made at the state or local level regarding public education? Um, one of the first, um, another major thing is besides, you know, checking the budget out is to support the home environment. Um, we're living in a completely different generation where, you know, back in the days you had one parent who was home all the time, but now it's taking two incomes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people who are single have to work two and three jobs or in school to better themselves at the same time with raising their kids. We still have a lot of latchkey kids who go home by themselves. We still have a lot of parents who really are not up to date on the changes through the math system or through the school changes with all the testers. So they have, they're not up to date because they've been out of school a long time, so they can't even help the children with the homework. Mm. So we need to support the home environment also. We need to make sure that when kids come to school, if for some reason that parent was rushing, and I don't care if they make $100,000 a year, if they forgot to give that child lunch money, we need to make sure that that child is fed at school so they can get the proper education. We need to also make sure that if for some reason they don't have computers at home or for some reason at home they are at home by themselves, somehow we are supporting the home environment to be there to help them. Make sure that child not only gets the education, but to be that is well fed, that is well nursed, that have someone to not only be a mentor, some type of mentor to help take care of them so they can see things that other kids are able to see, so they can go places and do things. But the only way we can do this is to support the home environment. Every child needs to be able to see the world, and we need to learn that we are our neighbor's keeper, and we can do that by, with all the nonprofits, with all the churches, we need to make sure that we adopt every child in every community and make sure they reach their dream. Good God Almighty. Did y'all hear what she just said? Give us a call right here in the studio. We have Belinda Queen right here, candidate for District 6 School Board, and if you all don't ask any questions, if you all don't Facebook us, if you all don't come riding down the street because we're right here in Capitol Heights, Maryland, then shame on you. Roland, let them know what we're going to do. <laughs> E-Life Media, the ultimate media outlet, broadcasting live radio and TV worldwide, powered by live music for you. Catch us at www.elifemedia.net. Come on, Facebook. We want to hear e from you. e Media, the ultimate media Give outlet, us a call right now. live Four, radio two, and TV worldwide, Four, five, powered by live five, nine, music for you. Oh,
look at more at home I think education starts at home first mm -hmm. and we have to do a better job of uh, tooling our parents tooling our, our kids uh, that that they must learn how to love themselves before they can love and reach out and start doing some other things you know one of the things that you know uh, I, I, I was encouraged by your words to say that you know we really need to look at our nonprofits uh, in Prince George's County, we have close to 1,100 nonprofits in the county, and I truly don't believe that we're utilizing them enough. Uh, I don't think they always have a seat at the table uh, to figure out ways in which we can assist our school system uh, in helping them where they may, where we may need to fill in the gaps. Yeah. The same with our churches. Uh, we have a, a lot of churches. We have several mega churches in Prince George's County. And I know they're all doing wonderful things, but I believe that we all need to come together uh, to figure out ways in which we can uh, build more collaboratives for our, for our students. So I'm encouraged by that. Uh, but my, my question to you is, uh, what is the school member role that you see uh, and their responsibility? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Again? I said, what do you think the role of the, the, the school board is and their responsibilities? Okay, of the school board itself. Um, the school board itself, one of the first thing is to make sure that money has been spent in the budget and the budget, the money that's allotted towards the school has been spent properly. Another role is um, when it's, things is going on in each school that you represent in your district, as a school board member, you should be able to, and every now and then meet with the principals, um, find out what's going on in the school, what is needed, what you can help with with the programs. Um, I, I know we have a CEO, be accountable to, for the CEO who is the boss, and work together as a team. I know you have to work together as a team, but also in working together as a team, you got to support the community and the people that you're, um, that you're working for that elected you to that position. Sometimes you may not agree with the team because what the team want is not what your citizens want. 
So sometimes you may have to go against the team, but it's all about representing and being there and being that positive elected official that you need to be and represent the voice of the people. It's not about Belinda because Belinda is not going in to represent my little one vote. I'm going in to represent over 30,000 votes in my district. So I have to remember at all times that it's not about me. It's about we, the team. District 6, and that's what it's all about. Well, I'm glad you said that because my next question was, what do you see as major issues uh, facing uh, the school district in, in District 6? So what are some of the major concerns that you see, not, not so much as a, uh, a broad school board perspective, but within District 6, uh, what do you think some of those challenges are? Um, some of the major challenges in District 6, I'm glad you asked that question, <laughs> Um, because although I graduated from another district in Hydesville, but um, my, my sisters and brothers, the younger sisters and brothers, they graduated from Central High School in District 6. My kids, all of my kids, from my stepkids to my kids to now the um, guardianship for the kids I have at the home, I still have three up Central High School, they all graduated from Central High School. My kids went to Walker Mill Middle School, Thomas Claggett Middle School, Concord. They went to C. Pleasant Elementary School. And I, as I go into these schools, I don't see enough change. I see a lot of facelifting where they're trying to facelift the school, but there's no major renovation going on. I see where I live, three houses on Walker Mill Middle School. We have a middle school that has no benches and nothing comfortable outdoors for kids when they come outside to play, whether they're playing soccer or baseball. We're going, as I've said before, in the 21st century, kids should not have to sit on the grass mm -hmm. as teenagers. I see if um, I, I substitute for a couple of years. I think two years ago I stopped substituting. And so when I was substituting, I would be in some of the schools and I, from Blainsburg to Walker Mill to Central to Concord. Um, I see where even the windows in the school are so outdated and so corroded and so mildew. And we have our kids in this environment and we expect them to go there and be excited about learning. I'm going to be honest. If you put a child in a regular house, in a regular environment, that's what they're going to think. But if you put a house, kid, if you put them in a beautiful house, if you put them in a white house, in a mansion, they're going to live that lifestyle. Our kids are a product of where they came from, but they do want change. They do want better, and they deserve better. As I stated before, I am a foster mom. I've had 10 foster kids, and I've had still have six girls at my house right now. The reason I took on that challenge is because I wanted to give them what I was given, and that's the greatest hurt, hurt issue, and that's the hurt is of giving back love and giving back knowing what I've been raised, which is knowing about Jesus Christ. So I brought them in my house because I want to make a difference. I want them to be able to have change. One of the things we don't do is we don't take people in and we don't try to mold them and shape them into being productive citizens. Yes, these kids have major issues, but it is my goal to mold them and shape them into being better citizens. And so far, I've done a great job at it. So we have to continue to do the same thing. And it is our job for every kid in District 6 to mold them and shape them and for every school in that district to make sure it is environmentally safe. The issues we're having with mold, not good. The fact that these kids cannot drink out the water fountains in these schools, not good. We pay too much tax dollars. It's too much money given back to the county, from the county, from the delegates, for us not to invest and repair these schools. We have to make a change. And in District 6, we need to clean these schools. We need to not only renovate, we need to fix. We need some new schools in our um, schools district. One of the things I'm going to say, and I'm going to let you ask another question. When we, we replace our cars every so many years, you know, we have issues. We don't drive the same car. I've never seen anybody drive a car 20, 30 years. It goes away. But our kids are going to schools that's 20 and 30 years old. It hasn't even really been renovated or replaced. We fix our houses up. After so many years, we have to change the roof. We change the carpet. We buy furniture every now and then. We're not doing it. We don't have new furniture as much in our schools. We put some in some of the classrooms, but not at all. We have to invest. We have to invest in our kids. We have to invest in our school. I'm, as I said, 2018, I am running. I am running to win. I'm running to make a difference. I am running to kid, put kids first for a change. And it is very important that in District 6, the economic environment of our schools need to change. When my kids walk into our schools, I want them to want to go to school. When I went to school in the 1980s, I wanted to go to school. I couldn't wait to get out of my parents' house. These kids don't want to go to school. They're coming late because there's nothing there for them to want. And I want them to want to go to school. Yeah, I heard it first right here on the Peace in the Morning Show. 
she is giving some uh, some real good stuff this morning. So if you guys are not taking advantage of this opportunity to give us a call right here in the studio at 240-455-5934, then Facebook, I, I don't know what else to say. You guys have a candidate that is running for school board. We are always complaining about our school system, their lack of, or what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Now you have an opportunity to chime in. So I'm asking everyone to give us a call right here in the studio. Send us a Facebook post, tweet, whatever you got to do. But you guys have Belinda Queen right here in the, in the studio this morning talking nothing but education, talking about the things that's going on. One of the things that I, I've said uh, that I believe that this is the year of the woman, right? I believe that uh, we have some real strong, powerful women doing some wonderful things right here in Prince George's County. And we need to rally behind them and uplift them as you guys are really trying to go about making change. You know, in Dallas, uh, we have a call right now. That's you. So right now we have uh, uh, a woman in Dallas, Texas, who just became the first police chief in Dallas. Yes. Listen, women are doing yes. some, some amazing things, and we need to rally behind that. I mean, you have, for the first time, uh, uh, a woman running for county executive right here in Prince George's County. You know, we need to, to, to look at all of those things and, and make a clear objective on, on who we want to put in office. Now, my next question to you is, you're running for school board. Mm -hmm. You're a woman. Mm -hmm. Love it. We have a woman already in the school board. Love it. And I believe we have two other males running for school board. Like it. Mm -hmm. Tell me what, what, what separates you or differentiates you from those other people. Um, I can say what separates me from the other people is I'm more in tune with this generation. Um, as I did say, I am the mother of three. I'm the stepmother of nine, and I have 10 foster guardianship kids. I relate to all of my kids. I have many of grandchildren. Um, what separate me is the seed in me was planted a long time ago as a community service by my grandmother, Mother Mabel Luckett. I've actually been out in the community from being a youth at six or seven following her around. Um, that seed was planted, so when my child went to, uh, my first child went to elementary school, I was part of PTSA. I have been a PTSA a parent forever, and I still pay PTSA dues to several PTSA, including Central High School um, and Walker Mill Middle School. I support the PTSA. I have been from president to treasurer to secretary. But it got to a point when my last child graduated from high school, I realized it was time to step beyond the PTSA and see what was going on out in the community. So that's when I just got involved with the Coalition of Central Civic Association. I've mm -hmm. always been a, um, a member of being with Wilburn, with the community I live in. So I became the vice president of Wilburn Civic Association, where I've served as vice president until this year for 18 years. So I've been involved out in the community, listening to community leaders. I've been nourished. I've been watered. It's been planted in me. I just didn't get out here and decide to run. We have a lot of candidates that are just running. They haven't been out here. They haven't been nervous. They don't even know or have a clue. And I'm going to be honest with you, they don't have a clue of what the citizens want. I go to every meeting that I can go to, sometimes two and three meetings a day, because I want to hear from the people. I want to know what's going on. I drive around District 6. Matter of fact, I drive around the whole Prince George's County because I want to see what's going on in our county. I go because I am concerned. I don't just go and not be the voice and not speak. I don't just go and sit and listen. When there's a problem, I'm going to speak out on the problem. When something's going wrong, I'm going to talk about it. I do it because it's in me. It's, it's actually, I believe, it's what I was called to do. And so I'm running because I was called to run. And what makes me different as a candidate, it, was, it is my calling. And I know it is what God would have me to do. You heard it first. Right here on Peace in the Morning Show, we're going to take a two-minute break, and I need you all to give us a call. We have Belinda Queen right here in the studio this morning talking nothing but education. Just I'm watching. I'm watching. Good morning, say all uh, my daughter's in
test two, baby. Make a point. Huh. You want some walrus music? <laughs> I'm got a big belly because your wife is a good cook. Hey, you think Peter Potter? It's our dad's all over your face. Come on out here, fellas. Let me see you down. That's right. Y'all don't know how to do it. You come out here and shake right it Right here. Right. Let me see y'all do this. Come on, you make some walrus. Come on, shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it up. I know uh, in, in Prince George's County uh, and in District 6, we have a, a, a huge population of uh, uh, Eng English language learners, mm -hmm. you know, um, and there are more schools uh, converting to, to try to accommodate them. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's important, um, not just for the the English language learning, but for our kids to learn other languages. Well, that's one of the good things I love about schools like Central High School that has the Spanish. I mean, Walkman has the Spanish and Central has the French and Emerging. I think it's good. I think we need to get out of knowing one one language. It's very important. Um, it didn't just start it back then. It's, you know, it started a while, a long time ago. One of the things that's so funny is with my kids when we go places, um, even where they're going to get something to eat or a nail salon, and when someone else starts talking in another language, they'd be like, what are they saying? I was like, mm -hmm. learn their language. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's very important that we do learn other languages so we can understand what people are saying because we're living in society where we all know that we have to be the eyes and ears of what's going on in our community. So if we don't understand what someone else is saying, how can we be the eyes and ears of this nation when we have so much going on? We're living in a society now where we have to be very careful about terrorists and violence in this community. So it is important that we start raising up generations that know other languages that are able to understand this. So I think it's very important for us to start tuning in on that and start teaching our youth as babies to learn them languages. Because I find that the youth growing up now, and I use, for example, my four years old, so talented. I mean, they know everything that's going on. She recognizes, she sees, she remembers people. She can use Facebook and the phone just as good as I can. So that's the generation where we want to start hitting them. The same way we're teaching them to read and write at the age, we can start teaching them a foreign language at that age. You know, I, I think that's really important. You know, uh, uh, Largo High School uh, is now an international mm -hmm. school. And uh, I, I know for, for a long time, people were fighting uh, to make that happen. Some were for it, some were against it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's pretty much everything. You know, I'm the uh, vice chair of the education subcommittee of the uh, House delegation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other day we met with uh, uh, the CEO, uh, Kevin Maxwell, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of disturbing things that's going on within our school system. Yes. There are a lot of uh, allegations that have been brought upon us within our school system. And I just wanted to know what are your concerns as a candidate, uh, but more importantly now as, as a constituent of the school system, uh, how do you feel when uh, those allegations are brought forth of uh, grade tampering, uh, when you hear some of the things that's going on with uh, salaries for our teachers? Uh, I just wanted to hear your input on your thoughts on that. And then what would you kind of do differently, you know, uh, in raising those types of issues? Um, my my thoughts on it is um, I, I still I mean, hear from a lot of people just as you do out in the community. Um, and people talk about what's going on, and they said some of the things are for real. 
Um, so then it, and it's not just Prince George's County. Let's be realistic. I hear people say it's other counties, and I'm not even saying a name, but we, you know, some of the other counties have the same issue. So I think it's an issue across the state. I think one of the big issues is that Prince George's County is staying out in the news and the media so much is because um, we're not outreaching to our parents. We're not talking to them. So when issues like this come up, even among the school board members, we don't communicate. I work for Verizon, so I had 28 years in communication experience and marketing experience. And one of the things I find out in Prince George's County, our politicians are not good, good communicators. Mm -hmm. um, when something is going on in, in, in the county, um, citizens who pay tax dollars got to find out from the media, not good at all. Um, if something is going on in the school system, parents should be the first to know. If something is going on at Central High School as a parent, I should be the first to know. Um, I shouldn't have to look on the news and find out something is going on at my child's school. So I think one of the biggest issues we have is communication and make sure that we have an excellent communication system so we can educate not only the parents but the residents of Prince George's County and let them know what's going on when there are problems. If it is a problem where people feel like something is going on, as you said, the allegation with the grade system, let's investigate it. Let's say, you know what, we're going to investigate this and we're going to report this back. Let's not deny it because sometimes when we're in denial, it's like we're saying, you know what, I don't believe what you're saying, that's it. And, and, and as parents, sometimes we have parents who do that to our children, and it's not good. So what we're doing is, we're, we're, what we're doing is, is we're the parent, we're the school system, the CEO, and we're responsible for a bunch of kids. And so people are coming to you and telling you that issue is going on, and you're in denial of these issues. You're not even trying to investigate it at one point until you're being forced to. That's not good at all, because that's like saying, I'm not listening to what you say. Um, a child could be abused. I don't really want to kill him what you say it doesn't matter or a teacher is having an issue I don't want to hear and that's not good on any circumstances if people are having issues and problems they should be able to speak out and we should be able to work these problems out we need a better communication system in Prince George's County from the head on down politically we need to communicate with our parents with our citizens with our students so that's very important so for me it would be communication very important yeah I, I, I think that's a big one uh... Uh, I know a lot of people have come to me and said, you know, we have to do a better job of the, being able to disseminate information. Uh, you know, we have to be able to respond to things in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. And and that is a huge concern and something that uh, the, the, the education committee in the House is definitely looking into. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that uh, I chaired a meeting the other day with uh, members of the school board, the county council, and from uh, county exec office uh, the other day. And one of the things I challenged them was we have to, to, to market and brand uh, Prince George's County, you know, when it comes around our education system. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think of Howard County, what is the first thing you think of? Education. Mm -hmm. Good schools. Good schools. Uh, when you think of Montgomery County, what do you think about? Economics, schools. When you think of Prince George's County, what's the first thing that comes to mind? <laughs> Tax dollars. <laughs> That's what people yeah, say. I mean, it, it, it's not our education. That's mm -hmm. that's that's for sure. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was with a focus group the other day. They said the first thing I think of when you say Prince George's County, crime, mm -hmm. uh, no jobs, uh, black folks. Mm -hmm. You know, all were not positive things when you what the first thing that comes to your mind when you say Prince, Prince George's, George's County. County. So we have to do a better job of uh, marketing Prince George's County. We have to do a better job of getting the right stakeholders at the table so we can continue to have these types of dialogues and communication mm -hmm. so we can make this uh, gorgeous Prince George's mm -hmm. County. You know, because some would say, well, what is gorgeous about it right now? You know, it's a it's a slogan. It's a it's a it's a theme. But, you know, what's the first thing to come to your mind? It's not gorgeous Prince George's for a lot of people, mm -hmm. not saying everyone, but mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So I think, you know. You at the as a, a school board member, you know my 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 ask and challenge of, for you is, what do you do to to change the paradigm and the thinking, and more importantly, bring those members together where you guys are all on one accord? Because for so long there has been disaccord within the school board. Uh, members are not getting along. Members are isolated. They're doing their own thing and working in their own silo. So. How would you, as a school board member, uh, utilizing your skills from Verizon, utilizing your skills and your degree in accounting, uh, utilizing your skills as an uh, uh, advocate, 
how would you start bringing everyone together and say, hey, guys, we got to now start working together to put kids first? Um, very important. Um, I, I have to say that it would be, to me, it would be plain and simple. I'm a person that try my best to live the fruits of the spirit. Um, and all of that, it will bring all that together will definitely come from the fruits of the spirit, getting the school board to work together. And we can do it. Um, this is called Peace in the Morning Show. And we can bring peace to the school board and to the system. One of the things you said, which is very important, how do I get them all to work together? Well, it doesn't just start with the board, school board, I have to say. In Prince George's County, 2018 is a voting year. It starts with making sure that we have the right county executive. It starts with making sure we have the right people on council and delegates because they're making a lot of decisions. Some of them import, um, some of them appoint school board members. The county executive right now appoint who the CEO is. Now, the only way we can work together, if we don't have people with the I mentality, this is what I want. If we have people who are elected and who are representing and realize they're elected for the people and they have a we mentality, if they have the mentality that this land is our land and together we can make a difference. One of the great important things you said that to some people is no longer gorgeous Prince George's because a lot of people that are coming in aren't from Prince George's County. They don't know where we've been. They don't know how far we came. They don't know the dirt roads. I was born and raised here. It's still gorgeous Prince George's. We have a lot of cleaning up and a lot of patches to do, but we have to elect people who continue to keep it gorgeous. Sometimes, yes, I get frustrated that the grass isn't cut on the media strip. Sometimes I get frustrated that the trash is not picked up. But we have to elect leaders, which is so very important, that are making these decisions to keep it gorgeous Prince George's, to keep public safety going, to keep it where citizens who come here want their kids to be educated because we're going to have the best schools as we continue to work hard to do that. We're going to have more jobs as we work hard to continue to do that. But not only that, that Prince George's County, when they drive through it, people want to come back just to ride through Prince George's County because it's something for them to see. Just like when you go to Vegas and you have night life there and people want to go through there because I want people to come through Prince George's County because they want to see the great art. And there's a whole lot of areas in Prince George's County that has a lot of history. So it's very important. So in saying that, as we did say, the only way we can get together is to make sure that in 2018 we elect board members who have the heart and the concern of making sure that our school system is a better school system, that we elect politicians who make sure that Prince George's County is representative but for the people, and we are represented by the people who really care about Prince George's County, not about making a dollar, because it's not about that. It's about being concerned about the heart of the people, about every people being diverse, whether you're low income, whether your income is high, whether you, know, you have a high degree, whether you're black, you're white, you're handicapped whether you're disabled, it's about representing all the people. And when elected, we have to represent everyone. Whether you're gay, it doesn't even matter. We have to represent everyone. And one of the problems is we're not. You know, we have people who have ADHD, dyslexia. We got to represent them. We have to be the voice for them. And it is up to us to be the voice for everyone. We have a lot of seniors who are paved the way. They paved the way for a lot of us to be where we are now. And now they need our help to make sure that we're keeping up Prince George's County. But unfortunately, we're letting it fall behind the way. Just like you said, people are coming and they're not saying what they used to say about Prince George's County. So somewhere along the way, y'all, we have made some mistakes. But we can fix our mistakes and we can get it back to gorgeous Prince George's County. In 2018, we need to make sure that everyone is voting in leaders who really are genuinely concerned about Prince George's County. You know, I, I think you made some very good points. Um, as I look at where we are today, and education is part of the driving economic engine uh, for everything that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about creating jobs, you know, businesses don't want to come to Prince George's mm -hmm. County if they don't have a, a well-diverse workforce and a pool of applicants uh, to be able to, to grab from. Mm -hmm. And that starts with our education system. Uh, Businesses don't want to move to Prince George's County and set up shop because our school system is ranked uh, uh, where it's ranked right now. You know, so I think we have a lot of work to do. I believe, uh, and I would agree with you 200 percent, 
that we have to do a better job in, in ensuring that we elect the right individuals uh, to hold these positions and hold them accountable and to be transparent. But I think, you know, it's a, it's a collaborative effort when you talk about uh, being a member of the school board or a delegate mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, because you have to know how to work with yeah. everybody uh, to get any piece of legislation passed to create policy uh, that you guys will be doing. But more importantly, for you guys at the school board, I think it's important and, and it's good, refreshing that everyone knows that you do have uh, an accounting background because how in the world can you get down to the school board and you can't budget uh, that $1.6 billion budget that they have uh, to ensure that that money is being dispersed properly within our school system? So I'm encouraged by that. Uh, and I know everyone else is as well. I think we have a lot of work to do, but I think uh, you are headed in the right direction to ensure that uh, you are uh, a member of that school board. But before we go, I just wanted everyone to know what are your uh, priorities? What is your platform uh, as a candidate for the school board? Um, my platform, as I did state it, um, is to put kids first for a change. Very important that we put kids first for a change. And as I say my platform, I just want to add to one of the things you said, with not only with collaboration, um, we got to make sure that we do put kids first for a change because Companies are not going to want our students if they have to go to Prince George's College or Maryland University and they got to take basic courses. We have to make sure that we're giving our kids the best education. So in doing that and putting kids first for a change, my first thing will be to do is to find funds to retain skilled teachers to make sure that we are retaining teachers here. We have a lot of teachers that, that starts here, but then they move on for other reasons. We need to make sure that we retain skilled teachers, teachers who love what they do and have a passion to mold and shape these kids into being the productive citizen that they can do. Um, the second thing will be the I for first is invest. We need to invest in innovative teaching strategies and technology. Very important that we have technology that's up in the 21st century. How can our kids apply for jobs when we don't even have the technologies that they need to be able to get them jobs? You're right, companies are looking for um, kids and they're not finding them in Prince George's County because our schools are not up to date in a lot of technology. Mm -hmm. So they won't be able to get them jobs. We, at one time, we used to have union shops come in and train kids, and we used to be part of unions, and kids could even go out because they had that training. That's not being even done in a lot of schools. So we need to make sure that we invest in innovative teaching and technologies to, um, strategies for our kids. And all would be to raise the school standards and student achievement. I stated before, and I'll state it again, it's important that every student, every baby, every child, reach their dreams, their hopes, no matter what they want to do. It is our job to make sure when they enter Prince George's County Public School, whether they decide that they want to go to college, whether they want to go into the military, whether they just want to work, whether they want to go to trade school, whatever they want to do, or whether they just want to dance, that so they reach their hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. It is our job to do that because they came to us for 12 years to make sure that they're able to do that. About time, when they leave Prince George's County Public School, they should be ready to be able to do whatever they decide to do to reach their hopes and dreams of doing that. S, to support the home environment, very important. We talked about that. We definitely have to support the home environment. We can't have babies coming to school tired. We don't know what's going on in the homes. Mm -hmm. We we got to start supporting the home environments. We can't have them hungry. We don't know why so many kids are coming to school. We have a lot of schools that have just low income. It is important for us to keep these lunch programs. It is important for us to feed every child. It is important for us to get the nonprofits, the churches, and the, the unions to be there to help some of the kids after school who need the help or who need help with trading. It is important for us to make sure that every program that is available, that we support the home environment, whether it's a mentor that is needed to be there for the child, we support whatever is needed with the parent. And if it's just the parents, which is very important, if parents need to be taught on being parents, if parents need to be up to date and taught on education or helping their child, then we need to support the home balance with, balance, um, the home with that. We need to teach our parents. You know, we need to reschool some of our parents for their high school diploma again. We need to do that because 
and some of the parents like me have been out 30 years, but I do keep up because I have so many kids that I have to have homework, but some of them haven't. So things have changed. So if parents need help in learning these things. We need programs. And there's no reason that we don't because there's a lot of programs out there that we can do that every child should have on their home computers if they have one that can not only help us but help the parents. And last but not least, we need to transform public opinion through transparency. We have to be very important. We talked about that the opinion of public makes a difference. It makes a difference, as Delicate Barnes just said, whether companies want to come and invest in Prince George's County. It makes a difference whether people want their kids to go to Prince George's County Public School. I cannot stand to hear when I'm out somewhere and someone tell me, someone I see, and I say, oh, how you doing? I say, so where you living at? Well, I had to move to Montgomery County or Charles County or Howard County because I needed to make sure that my child got the best public education that was available. I'm not mad at them because it's their responsibility to make sure that their child is molding shaped and get the best. But I am upset at us in Prince George's County because it is our responsibility to keep them here. It is our responsibility to make sure that their child have the best. It is our responsibility to be transparency. So that's very important that we need to transform public opinion on our school. We need to make sure that Prince George's County have the best. That in everybody's mouth, when they hear Prince George's County, they will hear gorgeous Prince George's. And together, only together, this is my slogan, Belinda Queen, y'all, only together we can make a difference. We can't do it with an I, we can't do it with a you, but we can do it with a we. Only together we can make a difference here in Prince George's County. Now, if y'all didn't hear nothing else, you heard her platform her beliefs, and what she's trying to do as candidate of the school board right here in Prince George's County. Before we end, I just want to know what other upcoming events and how can people uh, find you if they want to know more about you, get behind you, uh, volunteer to be on your campaign, uh, donate to you. How can they uh, do that? Um, one thing important, I'm, I'm going to tell you, we do have a website. Um, you can reach me on Facebook. Everybody know Instagram. I'm out there, Belinda Queen. The website is www.votebelindaqueen.com. You can call me on my cell, anybody that know me. I am very personal with everybody. I don't try to hide my cell phone. You can reach me at 301-602-6857. I believe as a politician, and I am elected right now to the Democratic Central Committee, that you should be able to reach me anytime you want. You can call me just about any time. I may not answer if I'm asleep, but I will call you back. Send me a text. Again, my cell phone is 301-602-6857. You can reach me just about 24 by 7. If I don't answer the phone, text me. I will get back with you. Um, some of the upcoming events is this coming Saturday. We are having a barbecue scavenger hunt. You can go to the website again, votebelindaqueen.com, and register for that. It will be at my house. Um, I believe in opening up my homes. Um, everything I do, I am running for school board. Remember that. So everything we do is going to be centered around the babies. Um, I was raised by my grandmother, as I did say, Mother Mabel Luckett. And one of the things she did is make sure that we had programs and we went places and we did things. So everything we do will be centered around youth. So we're going to have a barbecue scavenger hunt. It's going to be fun things to do for the kids. Um, we have upcoming. Also, we're going to be having a pool party. Um, you want to find out about that, go to the website. We're going to have an ice cream social. Go to the website. We're working on now trying to get um, my daughter and them are stressing a go-go band. We're going to get some type of band. <laughs> um, but, we're, but we're working on programs. Um, probably do a skate party. But everything is going to be surrounded by our babies. One of the things I learned is we got to keep our kids active. When I was growing up, it was so many programs that my grandmother took us so many places. We went to museums. We went to the skating ring. Even if we got to walk there, we stayed at the pools. But our kids were active. They had something to do. They had places to go. And it was people who pulled together with cars to make sure that kids were able to do that. So we want to make sure that we get a team of people together so if your child don't have transportation and they want to go, Hit us up on the website. Let us know. We want to be there for the kids, and we want to make sure that every child is able to enjoy each of these events. And you guys heard it doing. first. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Peace in the Morning show. Latasha Ward, I know you came on late, but I know you were listening to your girl, Belinda Queen, hey, and all the things that she's doing. I'm so excited about this upcoming election because I believe that uh, now versus uh, the past, we have some real good qualified candidates that are running. But I think it's important to you to get involved, to ask questions, uh, and not just vote by popularity, 
but vote by who's going to do what for you and bring those things to the table. And I believe we have some good people that's doing those things, but it's important that you give us a call. And we here on the Peace in the Morning Show are doing our part to ensure that these candidates have a voice, that you guys have an opportunity to call in, to ask questions, to do your Facebook posts, your tweets, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But we want to make sure that we hear from you. That way we as elected officials and candidates can do the best we can to represent you. So on behalf of my good friend Darius A. Stanton, I thank you guys so much for tuning in uh, to the Peace in the Morning Show. And once again, we had in the studio Belinda Queen, candidate for District 6 School Board right here in Prince George's County, Maryland. Peace. Peace. Elife Media, the ultimate media outlet, broadcasting live radio and TV worldwide, powered by live music for you. Catch us at www.elifemedia.net. Elife Media, the ultimate media outlet, broadcasting live radio and TV worldwide, powered by live music for you.
Life Media, the ultimate media outlet, broadcasting live radio and TV worldwide, powered by live music for you. Catch us at www.elifemedia.net.